Okay, just a little update with the progress on the jig. Um, as you can see, I just went ahead and bolted in a, a neck fixture holder, uh, or the piece that actually indicates where the neck is going to go, including the rake and the height of the neck. Um, the forward control fixture is all welded up and perfectly square with the deck of the frame and perfectly perpendicular to the earth um, up and down. That way whenever you bolt in your forward control bosses all you would have to do uh, then is create some little standoffs um, that match up to your down tubes and um, those are going to be uh, uh, just as level and even as everything else on the frame. We went ahead and uh, positioned the pro plate where it needs to go. Um, the little tabs that I made as you can see here are uh, welded onto the king post and then bolted um, onto the pro plate or the, pull, the pro plate is actually bolted onto those and um, uh, everything is leveled and square where it needs to be. Um, see another thing, oh the rear saddle here we haven't got it welded in but that's roughly the position that it's going to go in for our bottom uh, frame rails. Um, we've got the upper U holder, um, went ahead and welded that uh, nice billet piece on top of our um, 2x3 tubing and uh, it looks really nice the uh, the lower one is around here somewhere um, but that gives you an idea of what it's going to look like and um, just to kind of illustrate what uh, what this actually does imagine that your this is your rear axle and your axle plate is right on the face of this uh, your tubing that were, were to go around your rear wheel would come up loop around through this clamp and down to the other side both top and bottom um, uh, let's see another part that we uh, that I made is uh, just a little aluminum piece here with a notch in the top that would match uh, inch and a quarter tubing which is what we normally use when building a frame and what we're going to do is attach this to the uh, back side of the king post and have a couple bolts uh, just somewhere here in the back side of the king post and that will allow you to move this up and down and clamp it wherever it needs to go that way you can locate both the height and <clears throat> um, the side to side squareness of your backbone tube um, another thing that this guy wanted done um, for this jig um, was he was uh, wanted to be able to build soft tail frames with it so uh, I ended up making a little stanchion here, very similar to the rear uh, axle stanchion as you can see. Um, and what this would do is, uh, is basically give you a place for your center pivot of your uh, soft tail frame uprights, shown here. Um, basically what this would do, basically what this would do, would in, this position would indicate this spot on your frame upright. That's the part that pivots as your swing arm moves up and down. Um, and I obviously don't have it in the jig right now, but this piece would mount in the jig oh, roughly where the upper U is sitting right now, maybe you know a little bit uh, front to back. Um, and that way you could remove these bolts in the end here, uh, have this in the jig, bolt the upright to it, and then um, using your upper and lower U holders you could um, uh, basically put a uh, spacer like a tubing spacer between the two one on the right and one on the left um, to space it out uh, to give you your rear width uh, alright here's another uh, small piece that I did here um, what this is is a uh, holder fixture um, for a single down tube, if you were going to do a single down tube in the front um, of your frame, this is one of the pieces you would use. Um, it's got just a piece of the 2x3 uh, rectangular tubing, uh, 18 inches long, and it's got a hole up here in the top, um, which acts as a pivot for this clamp, um, which is an inch, uh, inch and a half diameter clamp. Um, pretty simple, just a little aluminum piece tapped with some... Uh, some uh, bolt holes here and it rotates on a pivot so that once you find out what your angle of your down tube is going to be um, it will basically adjust to that and I've just got it kind of pinned in here with a little pin for right now to kind of illustrate it um, uh, 
and just kind of notched out the front. Um, that's uh, nothing critical, um, just as a clearance so this thing can uh, rotate however it needs to go. Um, and what this helps you do is whenever you put your single front down tube in, um, it just keeps it aligned side to side and um, gives you a way to actually uh, hold it before you weld it. And it would mount um, actually right up where this T-shaped fixture is. And um, if you're curious about what that is, if you have dual down tubes, um, what you do is uh, if you had your down tubes, you know, suspended from the neck down to your uh, uh, down tube uh, holder saddles, um, you could use this fixture just to move back, make contact with one, and then um, see what you have to do to make the other contact this plate. Um, and once they both touch the face of this plate, you know that they're both in perfect plane with each other um, as far as uh, front to back goes. And uh, the new fixture here would simply take the place of this if <clears throat> you were going to do a single down tube. Okay, a few of the detail pieces that we wanted to talk about. Uh, some of the smaller things that we um, added to the jig near the end. I know Big T went into great detail step by step on how to make actually each of these fixtures. Uh, some of the ones that we just sort of uh, did off camera, I kind of wanted to show you what they were and how they how we went about them. This top motor mount holder was real simple to make. Um, we just cut our king post so it happened to be at, at the right height. Um, we made our uh, top motor mount slug holder uh, an inch taller than stock um, so that uh, you know it's so big motors are so popular nowadays um, that way the, the frames that a guy builds with this jig he'd be able to automatically do one inch taller motors. Uh, in an earlier video uh, Big T showed you how to uh, make this uh, sliding um, backbone prop. Kind of the idea here is that um, you cope your tube on one end to fit precisely up here that you can kind of prop your tube in here. It'll come back to your seat post coming up out of here. And what we did is we just drilled a couple holes in our king post, made sure that they were dead middle and, and really in a line. And that way, whatever height your backbone happens to come across at, you just uh, put a level here, get it going dead ball, straight up and down, tighten up these fasteners, and bingo you got something that will hold your uh, backbone centered and prop it up there for you. Uh, uh, down the road a guy could drill and tap these, put a plate across there and maybe make that. In. This was real, real simple to make. It's just a piece of 2x3 cut about 4 inches. It's a piece of 1x2 going across it. It's a stop that positions the piece fore and aft at the exact right spot. And then your, your rails coming through, your saddles will put that tube at the right spot side to side. So you got to stop here, holds it front to back. Your rails will hold it side to side. This mainly just puts it at the right height so you can, you know, so you don't have to jack with it while you're. Then this, this fixture here is a separate, it's mounted on its own 2 by 3 It's a separate piece we machined. Just so if a guy's building a uh, soft tail, he'll have something to hold his shock mount in place. Front shock mount. That'll go in there like that. It's a real tight fit. I'm not going to bother to tap that in there right now. But that goes in there. The guy puts his bolt through there. Lock it down with a washer and a nut. And that'll hold your front soft tail shock mount in place. Of course, your rear soft tail shock mount will actually be on your swing arm.